everybody, it's Edie Doc Gamer with another unboxing video. Today we're going to look at the Lenovo Yoga A940 all-in-one PC. Now this PC is a Microsoft Surface Studio competitor. This is the first stu Surface competitor that I believe is out on the market today. It has the screen that can go almost flat, I think it's to 25 degrees, um, from a typical desktop mode to a drafting table mode. So this device is interesting because not only does it have a folding screen, it also has a Qi um, pad for charging your devices. And it's also um, equipped with a, a nice processor a uh, desktop class processor and uh, this is also the first device of its kind that I believe has a video input so if you're using another PC or another video device or maybe even a Mac you should be able to plug that device into the yoga and utilize the screen there as well so um, I'm making this video because there's a bunch of questions I have that aren't answered by reading some of the videos and actually if you go on their website um, it says the device is coming soon so I'm not even sure if they should have sold this to me but here it is and let's do an unboxing okay so let's open it up now this is a 256 gigabyte SSD drive Equipped also with a one terabyte, I believe, non SSD drive as well for additional storage. Um, with the unit comes a mouse, a keyboard, which are connected via a dongle, I believe. And then there's also um, the touch sensitive or pressure pen. I think it has 4,096 4, levels of pressure. But more on that once I get the thing open, I'm going to look at it. So here's the initial box. It has a safety and warranty booklet. Here is the pen. And this is not magnetized to the side of the screen like the Surface, but it does have a spot near that Qi wireless charging pad to house the pen. Let's see what's in here. Power cable. Rest, wow, the rest of the power cable, which is quite sizable. Over here is nothing else. Maybe a quick start guide. Oh, this is basically a quick intro to Windows 10, I believe. Oh, this tells you about the Lenovo dial. And that's another thing that we'll talk about shortly because that was a really cool feature. And here it is. This is the dial. And if you watch any of the videos on this device, you probably know how it works. But this dial actually is a competitor to the surface dial but it's a little bit different as in its USB it has a button on top it has a scroll wheel on the side and a larger wheel on the inside the thing about it being USB is there's a spot on the left and right side of the screen you can pick whatever side you want to plug it into based on your right handedness or left handedness you can apparently um, set up that wheel to do different things in different programs depending on what you're running. Next, I assume this is the keyboard. Now personally, I like my craft keyboard when it works. Fortunately, the craft keyboard that I have tends to lose Bluetooth connection with my Mac. Um, that's a well-known problem that I'm hoping Logitech fixes. But in here you will get a wireless mouse. Wow, they wrapped this up. Good. With batteries, as well as the wireless keyboard. And the cool thing about this device is that there's actually a spot for this keyboard to sit when you turn the computer into drafting mode so that it gets out of the way the screen doesn't destroy the, there's the keyboard. It's good that the screen doesn't destroy the keyboard when you put it into draft mode. 
Now I like this device because I like to do some 3D work as well as some um, video editing and uh, art. So I always wanted a PC that allowed you to um, draw on it, but yet still be able to get myself into my Mac environment when necessary. Will the screen work when you pl plug it in with a Mac? Is there drivers? Will the screen work if you plug it in with a different PC? Will the drivers work? Will the dial work? Those are, or is it just a pure screen and nothing else? All right. Hope I don't drop this. So this is the device. Nothing else in there. Let me pull the keyboard, the box oh, out of the way. Big box. I got this at my local Best Buy and they were telling me that Yesterday, this device was not there, so this is brand new. I'm wondering if they probably shouldn't have had it out yet. I mean, mistakenly did. All right. So, packaged pretty well. Seems that everybody's taken after a lot of the Apple packaging, packaging things real nice in sacks or cloth or whatnot. So this device has a speaker grill, which is seen in their laptop models too. So the design aesthetic is similar. Wow, that's heavy. Webcam with a shutter for privacy. And here is your Qi charging pad with room for the pen. All right, so we'll power it up and see how it tests and how we can interact with this as well as adding different devices to it. All right, well, we have the unit set up initially and powered on. We're going to have to do some uh, software updates and make sure that we're up to date with Windows. I believe this is Windows Home Edition. So as... You can see screen is pretty bright, colors are good, pretty sharp. Uh, it was actually it actually looks better at home than it did in the store, which uh, I'm happy about because I thought it looked a little bit dull. Now, as far as picking up the device, well, that's kind of hard to see from that angle, but um, it's probably a little bit harder to to manipulate than the Surface Studio, but it's not like that is a deal breaker by any means. Um, high definition audio, the Qi charging area, but you can also throw your mouse up there. And then there, of course there is a place for the pen that can go right in there so you don't lose it while you work. On top of that, there is a little slot here. I'll go over the side and you can actually slide your keyboard. I probably won't be using this keyboard, but you can slide it in there so that when you need to put the unit down, it stays out of the way and is hidden, which is a nice touch. Side of the unit, there is a uh, audio jack, uh, SD card reader, a uh, powered USB port, and Thunderbolt 3. So. Interesting to see what kind of work this would do with a desktop class processor. And this is a 8th generation Core i7 uh, processor. And uh, interesting what an eGPU would do with this. Now obviously if you route it back to the main screen, you're going to take a big performance hit. Smaller performance hit for a large cable um, if you wanted to use one. Or you can send um, eGPU data to a secondary screen for a little less performance hit. On the back thing I like is built in uh, hardwired Ethernet. Um, you have a HDMI in port, which is this is the button here to switch the input to the new device. We will put a MacBook Pro to this and see how it works. You have four USB 3.0 ports and nothing on the other side. Um, as I said, there is a spot for your phone for wireless charging. Here is the shutter for the webcam. And last but not least, a nice little touch is 
a under screen light with three levels of brightness by pushing the button to illuminate any kind of work that you have on the desk in front of you. Now, this is a shiny surface, so you see all the lights, but if it was like a matte surface, it would just be illuminated. So, more to come. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna actually try to hook up this MacBook Pro to the Lenovo unit and see how it responds. Currently, I am updating Office and putting in all my account information on the Windows 10 PC. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, and, and I'm sure you probably know this by uh, watching some of the videos, but the, the dial, well, the Lenovo dial that I spoke about before, can go on the left side of the screen, or this is exact same thing on the right. It's magnetic, so you can actually just put it there on the side of the monitor and, and just plug this in. If I can get it, oh, maybe the wrong way. There we go. So this dial will have a button, a small dial, a large dial, and actually an LED, which is supposed to change. Uh, the Windows is uh, detecting it. This is supposed to change with uh, depending on the app. So I understand like blue will be Word and green will be Excel. Um, and so on and so forth. So what I've done is I've charged the, uh, the keyboard and this wire apparently is not for powering the keyboard but only for charging it. You do have to use the Lenovo dongle which is right here. Let me focus that for you. So there's a Lenovo dongle, dongle right next to the power. So I've plugged in an HDMI and once I plugged it in I tried to search for an input source, but so far I have not done that. So let me just really quickly open up my MacBook Pro. And let's see what's going to happen. So nothing so far. So let me switch, push the input button on the back and see what happens. I have it set to mirror automatically. Boom. So we are currently in a, let me get rid of this email. We are currently in OS 10 on a touchscreen PC. Now, touch does not work. And unfortunately, it's a sad, sad day. I've been trying to put together a review for you guys of this unit as well as the ability to hook into the monitor another device like a MacBook. Despite everything I've done, I seem to only be able to get this monitor to run at 30 hertz when something's plugged into the HDMI port. I have a Belkin 4K 60 hertz dongle, a 4K 60 hertz high def HDMI cable, but even though this device can run at 4K at 60 Hertz natively in Windows, I don't know if the input is just a lower HDMI spec, but it seems that no matter what I do, I can only get 4K at 30 Hertz. In fact, even a lot of the lower resolutions, in fact, most of the lower resolutions will still only run at 30 Hertz. So unless you guys have an idea, I've tried a bunch of different applications. I've tried Easy Res. Um, I have also tried, it, this is as far as in the Mac, rather. Um, I've tried uh, Switch Res X, and I've even used um, another gaming laptop here and this MSI unit, and I tried to use that and plug this into the monitor and even in Windows on the gaming monitor it still only allows me to run it at 30 Hertz when I try to make a 60 Hertz resolution it says that it fails and the monitor does not support that resolution so I'm not sure of any way I can make this thing run at 60 Hertz and for me as much as I love using Windows I'm primarily a Mac user people on my channel have known that 
but I love the touch and the interface and the ability to do the artwork, but I wanted to drive my Mac through this device too and use this as a screen, but I'm not going to dumb down the Mac to 30 hertz just for the touch capability of this PC. So unless you guys have any ideas, I am sorry to report that it is not working out as I had planned. And at this high cost um, price point for this uh, PC, um, I just can't get over why they wouldn't use a 60 hertz um, HDMI port in the back of the unit and why they would only go to 30. It doesn't make any sense to me. This is a high-tech device. This is the newest technology in so many ways, but yet to skimp on that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I talked to Lenovo Tech Support. Um, not that great. Got to be honest with you, not that great. Uh, talked to the first person who said that the problem is my MacBook and we don't support Mac, so have a good day. And the second time I called, I talked to somebody else who said, well, the video card is only going to support 30 hertz for a secondary input. And I tried to tell the person that the device is turned off. So basically, this is just a monitor throughput. The PC's powered down. They're not really utilizing the secondary video card or the primary video card as far as I'm concerned. This is probably just a pass-through and the power supply is powering the screen itself. And I asked to talk to upper level tech support or possibly a, one of their engineers and they told me this is as good as it gets. So unfortunately, unless I can figure something out in the next day or so, I'm going to have to take this back. So it's too bad. Um, I had some really, really big plans for this. This was going to be my um, main screen for my uh, physician work, as well as my art, and as well as just communication while gaming. And I was going to have my gaming PC used as well. The MacBook serves as the Mac, and it just gets plugged in on the side of my desk. So that's the review of the Lenovo um, A940 Yoga All-in-One touchscreen Microsoft Surface Studio competitor. So the, the pros, really, really tactile, great uh, keyboard. Um, the Qi charging platform for your phone, nice touch. The Lenovo dial only supports about eight or nine different pieces of software right now, and you can't edit it, at least uh, as of right now, um, but adds great functionality. The screen, pretty bright. Um, desktop class processor, again, uh, this has, just to show you the specs, this has an Intel Core i7 8700 CPU. Um, it does have um, well, let's go to the let's go to the cons. The cons is the video card. It is a laptop, basically a laptop video card. It is an ATI, uh, which I'm definitely not a fan of. Um, Radeon 560X, ATI. I'm sorry, RX 560X. Um, it has a secondary um, Intel UHD graphics, the 630 version. Not that great not going to play games well. I think it does 4K gaming at like 7 frames a second. Not to say you should be playing games in 4K all the time, but it's a 4K screen. And I know this wasn't meant for gaming, but for me, it'd be wonderful to have one device that does everything. So that's a con. Next con is the pen. Why not just use the regular pen where you put the eraser on the back? I kept finding myself wanting to erase like the Microsoft version of this pen. Um, sometimes it doesn't seem as responsive, I have to tap twice or push hard. Batteries are new, so that's not the problem. Um, other negatives, of course, the biggest negative is the HDMI input on the back of the device, which is only limiting me to 30 hertz at 4K. Um, mouse, it's flimsy, it's cheap, it's light. I guess it gets the job done, but there's nothing special about it. And the only other little negative is moving this down is certainly not as easy as the um, Surface Studio. So hopefully that gives you an idea 
about this device. Is it the device for you? Uh, leave a comment below, let me know. Sorry for some of the quality of the video. Uh, my mom was actually recording for me because it's really tough to do reviews with only two hands. So as always, follow me on Twitch at ed.gamer as well as uh, YouTube Gaming, um, Mixer, Instagram, Facebook, and on my website, ed.gamer.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.